Monahan here at Goods and Tools Supplies. We have another Tech Lab Tuesday episode here for you. I'm taking this flywheel grinding thing a little bit further. I wanted to get to the next level of flywheel grinding that doesn't even involve a flywheel. What it does involve is grinding a floater plate, a high performance uh, floater plate. These are used in alcohol funny car, alcohol dragster, nitro funny car, top fuel dragster. These floater plates uh, are four or six per clutch pack uh, in these go fast uh, automobiles out there. Made out of super hard material and we generally grind them with a CBN wheel or we use a vitrified wheel, this one right here. I was taught many years ago uh, by a good friend of all of you and me, mine as well, uh, Tim Hyatt. Taught me there's three things you gotta do when you're grinding these floaters. One, you gotta straighten it. You gotta get your straightening press out there and actually straighten this top and bottom. Make sure it's straight and splat. Two, when you first start grinding, you only wanna grind part way through on the first surface. Make sure you're touching at all four points across 12, three, six, and nine. Flip it over, fully grind this side all the way through, flip it back over, and then finish your grinding. Now the CBN wheel seems to be the go-to grinding wheel that a lot of you have uh, uh, selected for this uh, operation when you're grinding these type of floaters. We offer this in a 100 grip. We also offer it in a 60 grip. You asked us to give you a rougher wheel because the 100 grit might be too fine of a finish, too slick of a finish. Uh, so we went with the 60 grit so you guys could rough that up uh, according to how you want that clutch uh, to react to how you set them up. But regardless of that, uh, we also offer a vitrified grinding wheel, the FGW 37. Tim Hyatt actually helped us develop this grinding wheel. We spent a year and a half, maybe two years, testing, sending to Tim, letting him test it for us. And by gosh, he came through finally with our FGW 37. So if you don't want to use a CBN wheel on these floaters, you can default right here to a regular vitrified grinding wheel and grind them as well. A couple things that come to when it comes to mounting uh, this particular workpiece, as you can see, it's quite thin. It's, it's barely over a quarter inch uh, a thick. So we can't use traditional centering cones and hold down bolts that came with the flywheel grinder. We've got to get these little clamps here. They're called Mighty Bites. Uh, and you can pick them up from WW Granger. And uh, they're kind of a little offsetting cam that goes here by tightening up this Allen head set screw. We put a cam action in there. That puts pressure against the side of this piece. And then it's just held flat in that regard with side pressure as we grind through it. Of course, these will be lower than the surface that we're grinding so we don't grind off the top of those adjustment screws or tightening screws right there so I'm gonna set this up show you how it all goes together and uh, then we're gonna grind this I've got a CBN wheel mounted in here so I'm gonna grind it first with a CBN wheel then I have to have a couple of extras here as well and then I'm gonna change out that wheel and then we're gonna grind it here with the FGW 37 so let me get this mounted up and then we'll get right to grinding Now the Mighty Bite has, um, has two things going on. It's got a little cam action here, like I said. We've still got to mount it through the T-slots of, of the table here. We come in horizontally, probably three places. That's how many come in the kit. That's really all you need to hold this thing in place. We want to keep it from moving left to right. We've got gravity and grinding pressure holding it uh, from uh, uh, moving up and down. We've already straightened this, so that's why it's sitting on here nice and flat here right now, or as flat as it can be, because again, these things get really, really hot, and they do warp. That's why we want you to straighten it first. Uh, I still like to put coolant in the equation, so making sure that everything is, uh, is uh, ground uh, with coolant, that, that's just how I roll. Uh, I'm sure you guys are tired of listening to me say that. I still want to get this thing centered over my workpiece best that I can, so I'll go ahead and Send this head on down. And again, I want to get it in a close proximity to the workpiece prior to turning everything on. Once I've got that going, I get my coolant going, I'll get my table going. And <laughs> don't forget, safety first again here, guys. Make sure you got your safety goggles and a face shield on anytime you're grinding. Get our guards in place, lock the head down, 
don't have to worry about that. Fire up the grinder. Turn on the coolant. We're ready to start cleaning this thing down. So that cam action puts the side pressure needed to hold this floater uh, in place. Got a little water adhesion. See, I got that cleaned up all the way around. So now I'm going to go ahead and fully grind this other side. Machine on. Table on, coolant on, get that coolant going again. Get that, that heading wheel fed down on there. Let's get close. And we'll just start to break that water. We're going to turn our grinder on, start feeding again. Now we want to go ahead and grind all the way through on this side. We want to make sure that baby is cleaned up completely. So I know I'm flat on the other side. This will help me maintain that parallelism that's very, very important on these floaters. Just about got it cleaned up now. We've got it all cleaned up. We can back off a little bit. Let's go ahead and spark out. <clears throat> Put on the same guy, clean it off, down to the bottom, take it off. Machine still down. Let's get it out of here. Sometimes you only have to undo one clamp and you can get that floater right up, and in this case we did. So I'll put that right back down here. And let's clean up this other side now. And you get the idea. A couple more minutes on that, we'd have that thing cleaned up, looking like this one right here. So, again, right material of abrasive against the material that you're grinding. S straighten this first. Grind halfway through one side. Flip it over. Fully grind. Flip it back over. Fully grind. Check your parallelism all the way around this workpiece. Check the RA to see if that's. Uh, uh, to your standards, to your liking, according to your clutch guy, according to your crew chief, and make sure that uh, you can can change that with a 60 grit or 100 grit CBN wheel. So, on our next episode, we'll go with that uh, uh, Vetrify, that FGW 37. Thanks. Okay, I've already got mounted my FGW 37. I've got a new uh, a floater plate already installed here, using the Mighty Bites to hold everything into position. I need to dress this wheel. I'll go ahead and do that. As you saw, we got the stone all nicely dressed up here now. I've bound it up. I'm ready to go. Let's get the coolant going. Let's get the table going. Get the dining wheel going. Head lock down. Face shield on. Let's start grinding. Thank 
different sound to it using this wheel versus the CDN in the What was it, man? It really makes no difference which wheel you use, whether you choose the vitrified FGW37, you can see it was it was grinding really good. Or if you do choose the CBN wheel, it's your choice. Both of them will grind very aggressively. Uh, both of them will get you the desired finish you're looking for according to whatever clutch uh, specifications you're running. And uh, the main takeaway is that uh, you can grind your own stuff if you have a flywheel grinder and the right abrasive. So, again, we're Goods and Tools and Supplies. This has been Tech Lab Tuesday. I hope you enjoyed uh, this long, drawn out uh, episode uh, concerning flywheel grinders. Uh, as always, uh, catch us on the web at goodson.com or on the telephone, 800-533-8010. We'll see you next time.